Hey there LEGO fans and welcome back. Alex here. In this video we are going to be doing a review and placement of the new LEGO modular construction site. This set is a result of the Bricklink Designer Program. There were three preliminary rounds. Uh, this is from round three. This program uh, let LEGO fans select certain designs for pre-order. Only design reaching 3,000 pre-orders became funded and would become a real LEGO set. But unfortunately, only those who made a pre-order would get one and they are also limited to just 10 thousand units each so sadly i can't tell you that you can go out and order this from lego i'm sure you could find this for sale on bricklink from private sellers but my guess is that the price tag might be pretty hefty but don't despair lego has made the bricklink designer program official and it is currently working on series one so keep track of the progress on bricklink to make sure you don't miss out on any of these one and done exclusive lego sets now Let's take a look at this beast. The modular construction site is set number 910008, contains 3,374 pieces, and when I bought it, it cost 320 US dollars. After opening the box, I discovered three inner boxes. There was no order to the packaging inside each box, so opening all at once was needed here. As with all Bricklink designer sets, there are no physical instructions. You will get a card that contains information on where to go to download your instructions to a smart device. Now, I recommend that you use a tablet or a laptop for this because a phone, I think, will be just a bit too small. There are five minifigures included in this set, three construction workers, an inspector, and construction supervisor. Now, as you can see, they all have specific tools they are currently using for the job. As for the building itself, there is no mistaking the fact that this building is under construction. The massive yellow crane just towers above an already tall structure. Now, I measured the height, and it stands 23 and a half inches or 60 centimeters tall. The crane is the star of the show here. It has an impressive reach and is securely fastened to the structure. Minifigures can access it via ladder inside the mast. It's quite the climb and those final steps at the top look very scary. The crane rotates smoothly and the lifting hook is attached to a trolley system that runs smoothly along the bridge of the crane. The hoist is a simple but effective crank that uses an 8 tooth and 24 tooth gear that allow the user to easily turn the crank without losing rigidity to the load. The operator's box opens very wide to allow us easy access to our minifigure, and I really like the look of the counterweights here at the rear of the bridge. The crane was by far the most difficult part to build. There are a lot of Technic elements, gears, and pins used to achieve its impressive height and reach. At the front of the build, there is a gate leading into the construction site. There is plenty of room to park a car or maybe a larger construction vehicle here with no issue. I'd also like to add that the dimensions of this set are 48 studs by 32 studs. So this does add a bit of a challenge in adding it to an established LEGO city. Now let's take a look at the building. What was difficult for me when building this is the fact that it will never be finished. It is in perpetual construction. I wanted so badly to see what this looks like when fully complete. I guess an argument can be made to finish it with my own pieces, but for now, I'll use my imagination. Regardless, it still looks amazing. This has all the elements of a beautiful downtown skyscraper. Aside from the obvious, the exterior contains several small hints that it is under construction. From windows with no glass to unsmooth concrete, there are a lot of fun details that promote the ambitious construction project. The interior of this set will not include any amazing or finished products. This is very much in the messy stage of construction. The main floor has most of the tile down at the entryway, but not much beyond that. There's quite a climb before you get to the second level, but I do like how they arrange the stairway at the back corner of the building. The second level reveals some power tools for installing a wood floor that is in its beginning stages. This part of the build got a little frustrating because it was not uncommon to have pieces break off and fall inside the building. It was difficult to retrieve them unless you have very small hands. At this point of the build, I was also confused why it was called a modular construction site. There was nothing modular about it up to that point. Now, the crane does detach from the building at the base, but it is very much attached at the upper levels of the building with Technic beams that would be very tricky to disconnect. As I completed the second level, it then took the approach of a modular. So yes, only the top level can actually be removed. I guess that qualifies it as a modular, but it is a stretch in my opinion. 
The third and final level we get to appears to have a worker uh, laying some bricks. There's a pile of bricks there in front of him. Uh, there's also a mixer there to help him with it. It looks like there's some uh, partial flooring done as well. But this is the part of the uh, construction site that has a lot of indications that this is a ongoing construction project. And this is where I was really sad to see it end because I wanted the building to keep getting bigger and taller. But despite this end, I was still very impressed with the height of the building so far. It should have no issue being seen in the downtown area of my Lego city. And what construction site wouldn't be complete without a porta potty? I gotta say, this is a very well constructed porta potty, and at the moment, it is very clean. So that is my review of the new LEGO modular construction site. It is now time to take this thing downstairs and see if I can find a spot for it in my city. Like I said earlier, it will be a challenge, but I'm totally up for it. Let's see what we can figure out. All right, we made our way downstairs. Here is the uh, city. And of course, here is the downtown area. And of course, we have the modular construction site. Ended up placing that right next to the Daily Bugle. Now, it was always my target to put it right there. The problem I was gonna run into was the dimensions. Uh, and I thought I was gonna have to move the firehouse out of there and put it where this police station is and put that police station into storage. But as you can see, uh, didn't have to sacrifice any buildings, so that was awesome. Just had to move the uh, firehouse over by 16 studs. So thank goodness I had the room to do that. So it's sitting a lot closer to the train track, but the train gets through there, uh, no problem. There's no uh, safety violations going on, so that's always a plus. Once I was happy with the placement of the buildings, I started working on the details and the tiling work. Uh, that included a new driveway for the Ghostbusters firehouse. I also had a lot of space right in front of the construction site. Uh, used that to uh, park a big truck there, put up some construction cones. Uh, and what was really cool about having a construction site was that I actually had a place for all of my construction workers who were out of work to actually work right now. And that includes Emmett. Emmett is up there at the top. He's guiding in uh, that load of bricks there. Um, the crane and speaking of the crane look at that thing it is huge but not so huge that it sticks out in the city in fact let me let me back out here guys uh, upstairs when I was doing the review I was saying how big it is and it really is a big set but when you put it in a city like this next to all these really large buildings and the whole scale of it all it really shrinks down, done. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing to see that, but not so much that it disappears. It's definitely visible and it gives the, uh, the city signs of life, that it's continuing to grow and of course develop. Now with any new set being added to the city, it usually means I gotta move some stuff around or put something into storage. Uh, what was there before were a bunch of hot rod vehicles as well as kind of a car customization shop. Instead of putting that into storage, I ended up actually putting it underneath the city in that space there between the levels. And I think it actually worked pretty good. So we had this kind of underground car customization shop. Maybe it's legal, maybe it's not, who knows, but it's kind of fun to have it down there. That is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that review of the modular construction site. Let me know what you guys think about it as well as where I place it. And of course, stay tuned for new videos because I am going to be rebuilding this entire section right there. That is going to be a crazy big fun project. All right, guys, that and more coming up soon. Until then, you guys have a fantastic day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.